Hi guys and welcome to the AstroDog channel. Today what we're going to do, we're going to have a talk about some refractors and we're going to talk about 100mm refractors. We're going to talk about three of them um, and we're going to talk about some of the differences between the Saxon and the Kason ones. So let's have a look at them. We've got a couple here that are ready to go that we're going to talk about. The first one here is this one here. This is the um, Saxon 1026. Um, it is just a... Uh, the, all of these are Acromats guys. They're inexpensive. Um, but they do allow um, a marvellous range of scene. Um, they've got virtually the same focal ratio. But um, as I said, let's just start with the Saxon. So this here is a 102mm instrument. Um, you would expect um, fully coated optics. And of course that is what you get. Um, the optics are quite lovely. Um, there is actually a little bit of baffling that I can see on the inside as well. So you're going to get some quite nice contrast out of it. There's no question that this is a step up from the um, standard 80mm Saxon that you would get. Um, so it does allow in about 20% more light. Um, so you can start going after objects which are maybe a little bit fainter. Some of your deep space objects um, will be quite enjoyable to view through a refractor. And of course one advantage of a refractor over a... Um, a reflector if that's what you're thinking about you never have to collimate it you also don't have the diffraction spikes which are common when you get a reflector um, so it's quite good so let's talk about the um, construction of it and uh, how it is um, look it's um, very inexpensive you can get this one here for $550 Australian including a lovely mount um, which is an Alte Z up and down mount um, and it works quite well um, it is made to a budget a little bit, um, so you have a plastic lid, plastic dew shield. Um, but this is metal, metal. Um, you do have a metal um, back to it. Um, you have got plastic uh, knobs, um, and then we go back to, to metal here. So um, how good is it? Well, I would say it's a little bit um, stiff. You could try loosening it just a tad here um, on the bottom screws just to loosen it up a little bit. Um, if you wanted to, I would say that's fairly, that's quite functional. I mean, there's uh, nothing wrong with that. You can um, use it quite nicely. Um, it is a two inch focuser, which we do quite like. So if you want to use a uh, two inch diagonal eyepiece with it, um, of course you can do that. I'll just try and get this out. There's the other one, there's the secondary one. So there we go, that comes out. And then you can put in your two inch diagonal in there. Of course, it does come with an adapter, which is what this is. Uh, you take off the back end here, and you can use your, your regular... We'll just tighten this up again. There we are. And you can use your regular 1.25 inch eyepieces with it. There we go. So you just slot that in there. You will notice um, it is a straight screw that locks it in. There is no compression ring here. So that will dig into your eyepiece or your diagonal or whatever you're using with it. That is just one thing that yeah, you should take into account. Um, it is quite a light um, scope. The entire thing only weighs 2.2 kilograms. So it can be mounted on a fairly light mount, such as the one that is supplied um, with the package. So having talked about the um, Saxon now, let's compare this to um, one of the Kason ones and talk about what the difference is. Now, we might talk about this one here at the back first. Um, we'll just pull this one over so we can look at it a bit more. Um, the price difference is um, $499 and you need to provide your own mount um, with this one. So why is there such a price difference between the Saxon? Well, obviously there is quite a difference because whereas the Saxon weighed 2.2 kilos, this um, Kason model um, is actually 3.4 kilograms. So it's a much, uh, a much different instrument in the way that it's built. Um, you have got a uh, metal dew shield. Um, if you have a look, even the, even the, um, even the cap is um, machined CNC aluminium metal. Um, you can see there that there's some real care has even gone into that you know, tube. I don't know if you can see that there, but we've um, got a bit of, not, not baffling, just to, so it fits on nice and snug. So real care has gone into the, the build of this one. The um, coatings on it are absolutely lovely. It's a um, F8.86. It's um, 700, and 700 millimeters long um, is the focal length. The Saxon in comparison was 660. So this has got a slight edge, especially for visual. 
Um, but we do want to just pause and just talk about the lens just for a tad. Now with the Saxon, um, look, it's a mass-produced product. It's simply a machined lens, okay? It's a machine that does the figuring uh, for the most part there. This um, case on is hand-figured, so that makes a huge difference to the optical quality of the instrument. And also, it's um, got superior glass. The glass that this one uses, I think it's QK2 glass that is used. Um, I don't know if that means anything to you, but it's a bit of a higher grade optical glass. So even though it's not um, ED, it does have some superior um, qualities that just make it a, a much, much nicer instrument to look through. Um, do we have to say rings? Um, I mean, look at them. They are absolutely beautiful, these rings. Um, the advantage, of course, of rings is that you can move, loosen them, you can move them up and down the scope depending on the um, weight of what you're putting on the back, and you can always balance it nicely in the middle. When it's fixed, there's only really one spot that you're able to mount it in. Let me just show you, there are no rings that come with the Saxon, it's just a Vixen plate that's mounted directly into the tube. Um, on the um, case on here, you immediately have rings. Just the rings themselves are about $120 normally. So you can see the value um, that comes with it. So moving down further, um, well, actually, let's just mention two other things about these. I love these knobs. It's a great system for screwing it. When you do get yours, um, just put a little bit of lubrication, I would suggest, onto those. Or if you ask us uh, at the time of purchase, we'll do that for you. Um, and that will just make it really smooth opening up and sealing. You'll enjoy that very much. Um, these are about 33% thicker and stronger than the um, regular rings that are supplied with the Saxon. So um, they are a really great quality uh, set um, that comes with it. And of course, you do have um, on the inside some padding here so that it doesn't scratch the tube. Um, and that comes with it supplied when you, um, when you get your instrument. So looking at the back end again, um, all metal here. Um, these are the Mark II um, focuses. We love these, they are awesome. Um, they're quite easily serviced, um, similar to the Saxons, you just undo the four screws, you can access the mechanism. Um, one advantage of the caisson, when you have a bit of a look at that, uh, the, have a look at this width, um, let me just do the same for the Saxon, I'll just show you, I'll just try and balance it a bit. So we'll just pull up the back of the Saxon instrument. Alright, can you look at the back of the track? This one here is actually about 33% wider, so it tracks far better. Let's just see if we can get them both on the screen at the same time. There we go. Can you see the difference in width? So um, this one here has got much more strength for, for drawing um, than what this one has. It's designed to take a much heavier load um, on the back of it. So let me just pop the Saxon back and we'll return to the case on one here. Um, Another thing as well, remember we had plastic knobs on the Saxon. This one here, we have full metal knobs. Um, it is very smooth. Um, that is an absolutely lovely, uh, lovely pull on that. It is very, very easy to, to, to rake that in and out, um, to in and out focus. Um, you, uh, the, the strength of it is very good. Now, when we look at the far back, again, it is a, a two inch model and it does come, I've removed it but it does come with the adapter to allow the 1.25 inch um, eyepieces and diagonals. I'm just going to lift it up for a moment. Now you've already probably noted that unlike um, the Saxon, we have got a compression ring here. So any, um, anything you put into here is not going to have little screw marks in it um, after the evening of viewing. Um, it, the, the compression ring just tightens um, around that and so it is a lot better. Also you have got um, uh, a uh, dual lock system on these so you actually have two compression rings that you can push down um, to tighten your, your instrument so it will if you grip something with this one it is not coming out um, that will be there it will very securely hold any accessories that you have the knobs here are in order to um, just balance up how you want your uh, how tight you want that drawer to be um, you would if you just sort of, you don't want to screw this in all the way because that will then prevent it from coming in. You also don't want it completely out because that will be loose and go up and down. So these just allow that adjustment so you, uh, you can work from there. Um, let's now talk about the um, other option with the case on. You have the option at time of purchase to upgrade 
from the Mark II focuser, which is already very good, of course, over to this one here. And this one here is your classic two to one, um, uh, two to one uh, fine focuser. Over here, you can just see how little that moves, right? Versus moving this one here. So you can just see how that um, is a, uh, quite nice. Now, notice how far you can actually rake this guy out. You can go out to about 110. Way out to 100, it just keeps coming, doesn't it? So it has got a wider range of focus um, options. If you do need a bit more back focus, that will do it. Let's just rack this one out all the way, you'll see the difference. So when we just compare the two of them together, you can see you've got the different. This, this is a bit of a longer draw tube um, that you have on this one. Both of them are uh, rock solid focuses. I mean, this is out all the way now. There we are, it's all the way out. And I'm just going to try and move it. That is going nowhere. It is just that tough. Um, it is a wonderful uh, focuser. So to go to that one there, I think it's about next to $100, um, perhaps slightly less. So I hope that gives you a good overview of the uh, scopes that we've uh, that we've been able to show you. Um, you really do get your money's worth, um, regardless of what you buy. Uh, there's no question that the Saxon um, is a very nice upgrade. If you're considering perhaps a 80 or 90 mil and you just want to go to something that will just allow in that little bit more light uh, but if you can uh, and you really want a, a beautiful visual instrument for your life um, a, a, ch a cheap acromat like that case on it gives you amazing value for money with the hand figured lens um, and just all over um, better construction so uh, thank you very much for watching and joining us here on the astro dog channel you can always contact us, 1300astrodog, www.astrodog.com.au. Um, we're always happy to talk astronomy and uh, look forward to hearing from you and your thoughts. Thanks very much.